week's episode is brought to you by Tabletop Backer Party on Facebook, which is the largest board game crowdfunding group on this side of the internet. Featured this week with our sponsor, we have Enchanters East Quest by Mythic Games that calls for one to four rascally little enchanters looking to defend their village by collecting powerful artifacts and making deadly combos to defeat monsters for 30 to 60 minutes in this card drafting game, which reminds you never to mess with magical nerds. Hello everyone, welcome to I'd Back That Kickstarter with Gloryhound and... Dr. Glory Hogg, I always look shocked every time. You're like... I'm never ready. <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> count down. She just goes right into it. Though you're, it's up on the screen. You should be able to see it ending. Uh, I'm down here sharing it. Oh, well, so. we appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to everybody in the stream today. We have we actually have Vincent in the stream I thought I saw, which is yeah, awesome. Hello, welcome back. We missed you. We have Alan in the stream. Flyos Games is here, which I'm super excited about because they're nice. going to be able to answer our questions today. We have Martha in the stream and Kabuki Kid. Hello, guys. How are you doing? We appreciate all of you guys showing up. Unlike Greg. Greg is running late. Like, seriously, guys. Like, Always. what the heck is up with Greg? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Walters. So, Dr. Glory, Glory Hog, how's your back feeling? Well, to put it mildly, within 30 minutes of the show, I'll be getting an MRI. Woo! So MRI time. What's up? Time to figure <laughs> out what is going on. Alan broke me, and I've been broken since. Hi, Jimmy. How are ball. you doing? Guys, we have so many amazing Kickstarters to talk about. Like Some would say too many. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and oh, look, at Red Jin is in here, too. Hello. Gosh, I am so excited. We got so many of the publishers in here today That'd to talk to us about their games and everything, right? And Anthony from Genius Games. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for showing Bam. up. Yay. <laughs> All right. So first up, should we, I mean, should we wait for Greg? No. No? No. What a slacker. God, what He's a slacker. He's on his way, but he couldn't, <laughs> couldn't pull himself away from work, I guess. First up, we have Rival Networks here. Now, Rival Networks is by Formal Ferret Games. This is going to be for two players. So this is not the original Rival Networks. Oh, my gosh, I just heard Greg. Our dogs are going to start borking. So, hi, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Get your headset on. All right, all like right. we were just just starting. Of course. You're back. Vincent's back. Coincidence? I don't think so. Oh. Imagine Maybe they're the same person. <laughs> Imagine how late it would have been if I hadn't broken all, all those right. traffic lights. I'm gonna have to fix Greg's uh, thing here while we go ahead and look at our next one. So first up, we have Rival Networks. This is by Formal Ferret Game. This is going to be for two players only. So this is a spin-off of their two original players. game, which is very interesting. So first impressions, guys. Greg, um, I wanted to like the original more than I did, and I I played it, but it didn't like grab me, grab me. But oftentimes the two player version of of the, oftentimes the two player versions of these games I like better because they simplify it, and then it's also yeah, it's streamlined made for the player count that you probably play the most at. Correct? That's true too. So I am intrigued to try this one, but because I'm not like a fanboy of the original, I'd want to. Guess what? Try this before I buy it, probably. Oh, thank oh God, God you're back. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God, Greg. Whew. Yeah, but we I, needed I, that. I love the, like, tug-of-war tracks, like games that have, and that's what this basically is, is, like, three different tug-of-war tracks. So, uh, you know, games like Seven Wonders Duel and stuff okay. that have those kind of tracks do appeal to me. So I'm guessing I'd like this. Hi, Vincent. I'm guessing I'd like this uh, more than the original, but I still am not, like, super hyped where I'm like, I have to get this now. This will be available, like, you know, normal you do retail say that a lot. Yeah. channels and It'll stuff. It'll be out. You know, th I mean, that's not always true for Kickstarters, but this is one that will be, you know. So Red Jin here says that the art in this game is incredible, which is really interesting because I feel like people are very polarized in it's definitely on the art, art is always in this polarizing. game. Yeah. Yeah. And then Alan says, wanted to try the original Pax You, but didn't get the time. That's always a shame whenever you miss out on that. So here's the thing with a two-player variant or version of this sort of game. Well, actually, Dr. Glory Hog, so go ahead and go first. Sorry. I have no thoughts. No thoughts. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have never played the original. It looked interesting. I liked what you were saying, the kind of tug and the tug and pull, and yeah. I do enjoy two-player games a lot more than I ever thought I would. So I like having a few of them, so I'm willing to give it a shot, but I don't have a strong opinion either way. 
which is surprising. Really? I usually have a very, I don't have a polarizing opinion. I'm 100% okay if you back it, and I'm also 100% okay if we play it first. Is that like a go? You're like, you can back it if you would like. No. If you would like. It's just, I know that at this point in time, I know I'm not stopping you, so I'm just like, whatever. No one can stop me, guys. Whatever. No one. It's probably the meds. I'm so just like, whatever. Here's, what's, what's money? Here's the thing. They had Dinosaur Island and then Dinosaur Island Duel, right? Yeah, Duel Story. Which yeah. both are good games, right? But I'm wondering for me as a strategic gamer if this one is going to be too simple for me mm. and it's going to hang on to that sort of area where it's super quick out to the table, which is actually good for a lot of other people, okay? Where it's quick out to the table and you can get it done with, you know, two players and it's an easy, fun game to go through. But, like, I'm always looking for, like, that extra strategic one thing. So cap. I always like, like... In Dinosaur Island, I'm going to like the original Dinosaur Island a little bit more. Because it had more depth. Right. Got exactly. It. So I would rather spend more time with the game than do a couple of quick two players. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind depth as long as it's not bloated. And I think sometimes these games, <coughs> like Networks, is good, but it feels a little fiddly at times. It feels a little... And oftentimes when they streamline it down to this two player, they like strip all that away. And it's just the meat of... Like the experience that they wanted to give you originally, but like this is like refined. Right. But you're right. It can be like too much to where you're like, oh, now this is like too light, you know? Right. So it, it's a real like tightrope walk. Exactly. I think that in this one, they probably did a good job with the tightrope walk. However, you have to be prepared for that. If you are a fan of networks and you like the super in depth feel of it and everything, and how long it takes to make your plan carry out and stuff like that and with the aging of the game and stuff you might gonna you might like the original better than this one but this one seems like a really great like quick two player game that you can get to the table and still get that networks feel to it uh, Alan says I feel in general about the same uh, dual versions of games like I like the bigger one version. So yeah. the same as me. He likes big games goes. and he cannot lie. Well. <laughs> There's just been enough examples where, like, the like the little bit of streamlining that they've done with the two-player version is better. Like, Agricola is like right. that. Right. Seven Wonders Seven Duel. Wonders, it, absolutely, the Duel Seven Wonders Duel is a lot better. of fun. Uh, she likes yeah. that one where yeah. the other Seven Wonders, she's not as big a fan of. Here's the thing with Seven Wonders Duel, too, Kabuki Kid. So I hate like with a passion seven wonders you she, do she hate and it. polarized she like no reason i absolutely like insanely love seven wonders duel like that's so i'm weird. insanely polarized on that game for some reason and she waited to tell me this till after i got the broken token <laughs> for it, and then she's like yeah i'm not a big fan of seven wonders and i was like cool cool i got this Yep, okay. I think your opinion on Seven Wonders is becoming more and more of the norm. Really? Like more and more people are either burning out on game. it or they didn't play it when it was new, and so they're like, ah, oh, it's just another drafting game. And and I've started to fall more into that camp, too, where I'm just kind of burned out on it and over it a little bit, but Duel is just so good. So you got to be like me, only play a game two or three times, and then yeah. you never burn out. You never burn out. You never burn out. What is our ratio, like 60% new well games <laughs> last year or something <laughs> crazy? Well, Seven Wonders is one that we played – to death when it came out and it was drafting which was kind of a newer mechanic and now it's just been done so much yeah there's a ton of drafting yeah. but Alan, it's less exciting you need to get seven wonders duel it's amazing jimmy says it's the same for him like original seven wonders eh. and you know greg you're right whenever it first came out it probably was like super super amazing yeah, it was exciting. but it just comes down to a regular sort of drafting game yeah. whenever time over time, you know, because there's a lot of drafting games out there now. I think too, it's, it's that I I really enjoy drafting. Period. Yeah. So drafting and then any kind of deck builder, engine builder, I just really enjoy those types oh. of games. So I think I give them a little bit more leniency. Kabuki Kid says Seven Wonders Duel is getting another expansion. That's oh, cool. exciting. That's cool. All right. The so Pantheon. As far as rival networks. Final thoughts, Greg. What do you think? think Would you back it, it or not? I think it's a pass for me. A pass for you. Okay. Yeah. What do you think, Dr. Glory Hog? I'm okay if we pass. Oh, you're okay if we pass. No. Okay. I was for sure Dr. Glory Hog was going to be in love with this one. Really? Because hmm. it's a little bit more simplified. It's not going to take as long as the regular networks game, you know? And yeah, but that's become less and less of an issue. That was more of an issue while I was still in school. But, I mean, we've knocked out a couple – Two and a half hour games, Super like back long to back. Games now. So yeah. I think that if you the love, length doesn't bother me as much. I think that if you love the feel, or you want the feel of networks in a shorter game, and then of course then it's gonna be people a who are specifically looking for two player games and having having a game built around just the two players, 
makes the game so much better when you're, well, of course, when you're playing with just the two players. You right, know what well, I'm like saying? Skulk like, Hollow is really good because right, it's the two players. If right. it was four, I don't know if it would work as well. Or War it would of the be Worlds, really weird. like if you yeah. had two people controlling aliens and like one person trying to play the humans, I just don't think it's yeah. the same. Yeah. Well, I th they thrive it too. Yeah, they take an accountability, that two-player portion of it and really maximize everything that you're doing you can make the margins each other. on power levels really close whenever you got a two-player game yeah because well, you could say like this card's a one this card's a point five, and that's really easy to do on a two-player when you do a four-player game sometimes you want to have catch-up cards in case somebody's dead last and then you want to have yeah. the you want to have a card that slows down whenever someone's really far ahead and that's really hard to balance that whenever somebody like you could be like 20 points ahead and then somebody like greg could be 30 points behind how do they make that feel fun for both of you i think you've touched on something key to Game design, I think from a designer's perspective, you can make two-player game like you can refine two-player games better than any other oh, player Oh, absolutely. Count. Because it's easier to play test, it's easier to like reiterate and, and design and try again and try again and really fine-tune a two-player game. Whereas you can make mirror cards, essentially, where you're like, yeah. this card does this, this card does something similar, yeah. but with a slightly different drawback and okay. so on and so forth. So at $25, guys, this is a steal for a two-player game. It's 25 bucks. Oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely That is affordable. really cheap. But yeah. I already have... Dozens of great two-player games. How dare you, Greg? Why so are you even on this channel I, I right now? I just say, I'm going to be grumpy this week. I got news for you guys. Greg, I'm not impressed this week. Greg is the opposite of a super backer. He's like a minor backer. I'm a, I'm a, yes. a minor backer. And look at the backers on this, by the way. It's barely funded with only a week left. I don't think I'm the only one who's kind of like. No way. Well, it, has, it has 863 backers. It's at 32 out of 20. Yeah. That's pretty it's good. Just, okay, it's okay. just because it's. It's. Almost it's a $25 game. I thought it was 32 out of 30. No, 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 no. It's just because it's a two-player game. Yeah, that's why glasses. the margins are, Apparently yeah. I need new ones. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, why yeah, the yeah. margins are But with, are like, lower. an established designer and an established name, it's not, like, lighting the world on fire at 32,000. That's all I'm saying. No, I think that But uh, you're also talking about a re-implementation of a game that already exists, too, which yeah. do those ever really light the world on fire? Do, like, Duelist War Island blow up? Cr well, that might be a bad example. All right, that one might all right I'm going <laughs> to say I'd back this game, guys. It's 25 bucks. I would try it. Uh, my nervousness is the fact that it will be a, too light for me, but I'm willing I'm willing to try it for 25 bucks. We also guys. don't have like, the network, so that helps. Well, that's also true. We don't have the yeah, networks as well. We so I think this is a steal at 25 bucks, guys. I'm going to back this. Next up, we yeah. have like so many games to talk about today, guys. Next up, we have Migration Mars. Now, this is by Enhanced Games. This is for two to four players. It's going to last about 60 to 120 minutes. This game looks like this amazing looking space game with all the like these little rovers and like little uh, buildings and stuff like that. And then once I got into this, I was like, what? This is a roll and move game. I did not expect that at well, all. Yeah. <laughs> It was when I was watching one of the videos and I saw the move. I'm like, wait a second. Hold on. Pump the brakes. <laughs> you, so you want to talk about, uh, so, you know, if Kickstarter had like a giant backer button, right? Like, you know, like that Staples Easy button that you could just slam. <laughs> At the very beginning of this intro of the video, when they were dropping these down yeah. and they had that little car going out, I was like, back, because it looked exactly yeah. like, to me, like Command and Conquer, the real-time strategy game for computer. Okay, yeah. I was like, I get to send out that car to collect resources. Your chair would have swiveled around. And you're like, you're on my team. Yeah. So I thought, oh, that thing is going to go out. It's going to collect resources. I'm going to be building up like armories and maybe building space tanks or something. And then I could try to take out their resource collector. And I thought, man, this is finally a real-time strategy game that's a board game. And I was super excited. And then I saw that, no, you're just rolling a die. And then that decides where the guy goes <laughs> and then what they get. And then you've got, on top of that randomness, you also have random events that happen. And there's just a lot more randomness to this. Would seem like it was a very strategic game of like where you place your buildings, Does it feel like a how you update. Design a little bit. I don't know if it feels dated because I'm not against rolling, but and you're only rolling for just your resources. But it does add a lot of randomness to it. Yeah. Where I feel like if it was cards, where you had like say two five move cards and like two two move cards and one move one card, and you had to decide which cards you wanted to use and how fast you want to get to the end of that track to collect your resources versus did you want to collect a whole bunch of resources before you go to the end and trigger the event? Because that's the, that's the whole deal. If you roll low, you're going to collect more resources, but it's going to take you longer before you actually get to use them. Right. If you roll high, you're going to skip to the end really quick, but then you might get screwed by the event. The event might really mess you up because you don't have a way to fight through it with resources. If you had a way to do that yourself and self-mitigate and push your own luck by yeah. playing cards instead, I think that would that would make the difference for me. I, I agree with you that the longer I watched, I like looked into this Kickstarter, the less I was interested in it. It makes a good first, first impression, yeah. and then as you and then I looked at their prior like Kickstarters. The last thing they designed was like a literal 
broom. Like the last thing they kick a started. A broom? That, like that's this is awesome. not a game like company. Like a really good That's broom. awesome. <laughs> like a broom that's like a vacuum too, I think. Ooh, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to like spend a bunch of money. I mean, it's not crazy okay. expensive, but so on, a, on a campaign that's like they made broom last time. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> you know. Whenever I saw this was a uh, roll and move game. It was like, okay, so I saw it, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. And then I saw it was roll and move, and then I kind of went down. And then as I started reading more into this, I actually really like the limited resources in this game. I think that the limited resources is going to make this an incredibly challenging game. And I feel like the roll and move portion of it, although it may not fit like hardcore, strategic-sounding gamers that have been in the hobby for sure, a long time because sure. – they automatically go, ugh, like they turn their nose up to that sort of mechanic. Yeah. This is going to hit that general market, and Maybe. people are going to know exactly what to do and be like, oh, my gosh, like this is amazing because now I can do these other things with this roll and move game, you know? So I think this is a very deceptive game, actually, because – it drew me in, and then all of a sudden I was like, "No, no, no, it's it roll and move." With your because emotions. yeah, because I was like, "No, no, no," I snubbed it as like a, a you know a gamer, and then like coming back, I was like, "No, wait, this actually has some really decent and really interesting things going on in this game, with how you're building things and then trying to pay for stuff, and then you you might have to take stuff off the board and everything." Like, it was really interesting, and plus it's a beautiful looking game. Like, okay, so for the fifty-ish bucks that it costs with all the plastic you're getting, I was pretty surprised. At right, the price, point. the price point is excellent. So Red Jin says, "I bet replayability on this game is really high. It looks like a game yes. you have to get good at." I'm in. Flyo says the game has great anesthetic, and I agree. This is a game pretty. you set up at any convention or uh, to new gamers, and they're like, oh, my God, what is this? And then you show them these roll and move mechanics, and they're like, oh, I kind of get what's happening here. And you okay. can ease them into something, and then, boom, all of a sudden they're a gamer, and they come to every game night ever. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I didn't think of this as the ultimate gateway <laughs> game, but you're really selling it. I think for me, since – the way it was presented at first, it felt like it was going to be like a real-time strategy game, like Command and Conquer, yes. or Warcraft, something along those lines. I got so excited, and then I came down so hard yeah. that for me it's a pass because I'm thinking so on our game shelf, which is limited, where would this fit? Like, what would this take place of another game? And I, for me personally, I just don't think it will. Here's the thing: it might be fun to play once or twice, but I don't think it replaces something on my permanent. Did shelf. I say anesthetic yeah. instead of aesthetic? Yes. That's awesome. You're putting people. <laughs> I always do that. You're putting people to sleep. <laughs> you make fun of my pronunciation, but then like you've got something you. Hit I too. always, Everybody I always does. say that by accident. She slipped up and see the moment. <laughs> I did. Hey, I did for the first time ever in my life. Heard somebody on a YouTube video say, "In the fact that." And I was like, I've never heard anyone say that before besides you. You're the <laughs> only person I've ever heard to say. And the fact that – th and she uses that a lot. Like as her, as I her think she's a trendsetter. I think that person that got it from that's her. That must be it. That in must the be yeah, it. Absolutely. In the fact that Alan she's said – She's an influencer. In the fact that Petter says anesthetic or aesthetic, you know, like I can see what Petter's saying about that. Yeah, and Petter. Alan's saying uh, – that Better. he had the 39 super early bird pledge, which yeah. is insane. 39 bucks yeah. for this game? But that's a good marketing technique, right? All that right? plastic? Because oh they get God. people to back early, which makes it so it funds first day. And then everybody else kind of covers that cost by getting it at the higher amount. It's, I mean, it is what it is. But that also turns away a lot of people that are super backers because they're like, I don't want to play that game where it's – for 40 bucks if I would have saw this on Tuesday, but now it's 50 bucks. This game is doing well, and it's doing well for a reason. It's doing well because it's hitting that target market that I don't think – that game companies that have been in the – Hobby market? Yeah, hobby market, and they haven't hit that Hasbro, Yeah. you know, yeah. general market here. And this game, I think, really hits home with that just because of, the, because of the roll and move mechanic. Imme immediately, people in their minds can – Relate relate that to like a Monopoly style game and go. Oh, I'm gonna know how to play this game, even though <laughs> there's a lot of other strategic things happening. You know. I like Mar Martin's point. It does feel like everyone's jumping on the Mars train right now, and the look and everything. Like this looks. Hold on. This looks a lot like terraforming Mars. Like Are you saying that Mars is like so hot right now? <laughs> it's so hot. <laughs> can, can Mars like be literally, hot? it's really hot. It's like so hot. <laughs> so you say Mars Bring is hot. Fan. People say okay. zombies are hot. She says that cowboy games are Hold hot. On. Everything can't be hot. So just games. No, no, no. Now you need Space to make so you need hot. to make a game that's on Mars with dinosaurs and that are also element. become zombies. That are that's a legacy Zombie game. Zombie dinosaurs and then on Mars. Boom. I'm in. You have a like million dollar game right there, guys. Okay. 
<laughs> and if you do it, like at least put us in the credits. And then you, uh, then you do the Cthulhu uh, expansion <laughs> oh, on the geez. end, and then this, you're done. This honestly <laughs> just made me want to go buy a remastered version of Command and Conquer Red Alert or something. But because I just want to play that real bad. What now. happened to you was what happened to me with t the Titan board, where I was like, oh, "Why doesn't this spin?" Oh no, we're still talking <laughs> about that. <laughs> The whole game is ruined <laughs> because the board doesn't spin. That's so ridiculous. Oh, dinosaur bee zombies from Mars. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and cats. Cats are hot. I think it's not so much that Mars seems particularly hot. It's that there were no Mars games like 18 months ago or two years ago. And then it was like terraforming Mars hit. And now there's been a bunch. That's what we happens, have had a Mars though. like every other week, it seems like. Yeah. That's what happens. Not as much as the big legacy Dungeon Delve, Gloomhaven clones. Well, but we've yeah, had, yeah. You, you we've get had a lot. You get people, you get designers who are going around mm. to all the different uh, production companies. And then they're trying to sell their designs and yeah. stuff. And they might have a theme tacked onto that. And all of a sudden, you start spawning ideas to everybody. You know? like whoever yeah. mentioned it, even the graphic design here and stuff just feels really reminiscent of Terraforming Mars. Yeah. There's like a Mars game aesthetic. That's not only the theme, but to like the aesthetic is being, or, or anesthetic. What about the anesthetic? Is being, yes. <laughs> is being like mirrored as well. To hmm. be fair, how else would Mars look? Yeah, it's reddish orange. The whole planet. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right? there's only so like, much you guys can do with Mars, guys. <laughs> if, we, if we got pictures of Mars and it was bluish, yeah, we'd be like, it's oh, like white. Come or on. Like, what? I never so guessed. the price on this right now is I think I put down forty nine dollars because I was assuming at the time that's the early that bird price, right? No, I was assuming that the early birds would be sold out by now. So and you're right because they are sold yeah, out. Yeah, I figured high. they would. Isn't be. there like an er like isn't there three tiers? Wasn't there yeah, like a launch special and early bird and then the regular? When I had there was a lot of tiers. There was only a couple early birds yeah. left, but the price that I put down here is not for the early bird pledge, I think. But I mean, I'm gonna say if you bucks, if you guys yeah. frequently go ahead and entertain new gamers, this is gonna be this is gonna be the one to back. Greg, would you back this? I think I'm gonna pass on this one. Pass on this one? Yeah. Any reason why? Just I'm not, not your, even a not big fan jam? of terraforming Mars, <laughs> which is kind of the like granddaddy of all of these games, so Dr. Glory Hog? I would definitely play it, but I don't think it's going to earn a spot on our shelf. Okay. And yeah. for our comments and everything, for our people listening out here, did you guys back this game? I want to know because there's a lot of backers on this game. Oh, yeah, and it's doing well. I'm wondering how many of the people in the hobby market are backing this game versus how many people in the general market are backing well, this well, game. Well, Battlecry couldn't back it because they went all in on Migration Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> So that's gonna be a really good one. That's gonna Isn't be a really good one. Isn't that the name one. of your memoir? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That was the name of my high school band. <laughs> wow, <laughs> guys. Now, in Petter, Petter's right because Petter also knows yeah. that Command and Conquer is the best. Ninety oh. minutes is pretty long for yeah. a gateway-ish type game. I don't see that it. Is I don't true. see it as quite the like great gateway game that you're hoping. I, I, I'm a little. I think that mechanic is familiar, but once you get in the meat of it, gateway gamers are going to be like, whoa, what is going on here? There's more here than I expected. Yeah. It's too long. I was, I was really excited that the different buildings you put down were going to like let you spawn troops and like actually interact with other Hold players on. by going and attacking them or, or taking over or something. Like I, I wanted it to be From what we're <laughs> seeing here, though, a trend. Mm -hmm. it looks like, because mostly we have hobby gamers in our channel, it yeah. looks like the majority of hobby gamers are not backing this. Is this is general gamers but backing this. Like we've said, something like Here to Slay makes a million because it does hit that kind of entry level gamers yeah. and people that aren't even necessarily like gamers people that are just like oh this looks like fun why not twenty dollars this <laughs> might be more geared towards that and that's fine it's just not gonna be something that I'm going to back and if you want to know oh, what people yeah. who make broom you know their taste in games broom makers taste in games mm -hmm. then you gotta back this so broom taster games broom also taster games as my new company it's my new startup as a note guys yeah in the comments shivery timbers is it's back on Kickstarter. I believe that one went off. And yeah, then it we went back on. Yeah, we had covered it. Yeah, we talked it. about that a couple months ago yeah, when so it first went on. You were interested in that. Like, make sure to go and back that. Okay. All right. Genotype is up next. Ooh, I'm so excited about this game. It's all about the oh ALs and how they cross. Chromosomes, okay. baby. Chromosomes. Genotype is for one to five players. <laughs> this is going to last about 45 to 90 minutes. This has worker placement and then it has some dice rolling and some dice placement going on in here. 
it is so I love genius games, guys. I don't know how many. I mean, they've made quite a few Name games. Made three of their games. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, Peptides, I know, is one of them. If she does, then I'm not so bad. Uh, Nerd words. I know there's cytosis, one about, like, right? yeah, cytosis, cytosis is another one. Periodic is good. That's right, Periodic. And Periodic yeah. ones, the Stone Mayor games yeah. for 2018, I think. Yeah. Like, they're, they're designing award. Genius Games' whole shtick of, like, making science That'll fun, do. I'm That'll so do. all about. It's like... Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a big fan of that, too. I love that they're doing that. Guys... And consistently doing it well. Right? Yeah. Right? This is something... Like, they do such a good job of putting the science in the game and also making it a game. Like, yeah. do you know how hard that is to do? No, because as you're designing the games and stuff, like, stuff goes all over the place, and you start trying to make a game, and... Some of the theme gets lost in that, and right. they are able to build it into the game so well. I'm over the moon with this game. Like I. So, what were your first impressions then? So excited! Okay. So excited! <laughs> 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 All right, Greg. What were your well, first impressions? Well, you mentioned impressions? the worker placement. <laughs> you mentioned like the resource thing. I like the fluctuating resource market. That always is kind of interesting to me. Like th when there's like an economy in a game. I don't know how big of an aspect of the game that is, but it's just another thing that gets me excited about this. I like Genius Games. I like John Covey. You like pea plants? What's that? I love peas. <laughs> I yeah. love peas. Who doesn't <laughs> love peas? So delicious. Like peas and carrots. <laughs> peas are good because they're like non-GMO. They're like gluten-friendly. They're vegan-friendly. I mean, everyone <laughs> likes peas. Everyone can eat peas. Um, I mean, okay. I'm married to an evolutionary biologist, so like instantly I'm like, my ears <laughs> perk up with like a Mendel game. It's super funded. I mean, this one's got 3,000 plus backers. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited. Of, of the ones this week, spoiler alert, this is the one I'm most excited about. Is this the one about. you're so excited about? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. This and is going to get to the tail. And 45 to 90 minutes is nice. You know, it's not too long, but it also doesn't feel too light. You know, it's not like a little 20-minute filler. It's like that sweet spot. I like games that are Guys, that length. This is $39. Yeah, and it's reasonably priced, too. Yeah, everything about Hold this. Hold on. Are you saying this is a possibility to be backing <laughs> yes, this Yes, yes. Of all the ones, this is definitely the one oh, thank God. I'm most excited <laughs> about. Save 40 bucks this time. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Glory Hog, <laughs> what do you think about this game? So You love biology. Yeah, and, I, and I, this is one of the things I nerded out about when I was taking like my anatomy classes and things like that, physiology and everything. Um, cause that's what I originally went to school for was just genetics, right? Like I, I can't tell you how many people I had to explain like why my daughter's eyes are blue while her eyes are brown <laughs> and mine are blue and like well, how my daughter <laughs> could have blue eyes. And I'm like, guys, it's all about genetics. Like her father had blue eyes. So there was a passive gene that got passed down. And so I'm like, we had two passive genes. Yeah, right? And so that since there was no since there was no aggressive gene, there's just the two passive genes, like that's how she ended up with blue eyes. Like I had to explain that to so many people. It was embarrassing. Um, that being said, I'm not excited about it. Well, really? Because, what? hold on. What? Because <laughs> I just feel like it's going to be good. Um, so I don't feel like I need to get hyped about it. I just feel like it's something I'm just going to buy. Does that make sense? Like, there's some games where you're like, you're on the fence with it and you're like, oh, this is going to be amazing, but you don't really know. This one, I just feel like I know enough about the company. It feels like I'm back in like a gambling games or, like, or, or you know, like a Skybound game okay. that, I, that I just kind of know I'm going to like it. So I don't feel like, I didn't feel like I had to get super invested into it. I looked at it and I was like, cool. I like genetics. I've liked their games in the past. It's worker placement. I'm probably just going to get it. Like, so I didn't really feel like I had to get like all get myself hyped up about okay. it. It was just like a yeah, I'll back that like really quickly. Okay. But it wasn't like a <gasps> back that. It was just like yeah, oh, of course I'm yeah. gonna get okay. that one. So Does Alan, Alan says, cue the deluxe arms. Oh. Are you guys going deluxe? deluxe. Greg, oh, Greg, how long Greg. Have been here? a few God. weeks. <laughs> Go back God. to California, you hippie. <laughs> <laughs> this guy in Arizona, we deluxe on time. So the deluxe portion of this game. First off, guys, look at these components. Yeah, so like where, components what are your thoughts fantastic. on this game? Because I'm pretty sure you're you're probably the same she's boat I am. She's pretty pumped about it. Yeah, clearly. Look at her. She's this like is grinning <laughs> ear I'm to so ear. I'm so excited. I'm yeah. so drooling excited. over it. She's like, I gotta get me some peas. <laughs> I have to say, this is a, a topic that would be really hard to make into a game. I don't think I could have thought of a way to really make it into something. Right. So when I saw it, That's I was like, right? about genius games. Okay, yeah. so I'm like, this is, this is solid. And like you said, whenever you have, have some kind of history or background in that type of science, and then you see a game come out of it, you want to make sure it's good. Because if yeah. I'm playing a game and somebody doesn't mention that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I can't do my taxes, but I know that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. One of my favorite parts here is the fact that, you know, you're rolling these dice and then you're placing them in those little squares and stuff. And you're still, like at the will of the dice in those like so it's nature it's like nature still has like right. it's little because you can't just deviation of things you can't right. just put they two strains together right. and pollinate them and then <laughs> expect something to happen like it can still 
get both. It could still just get wrecked, you yeah. know? Nature finds well, a way. Right? You get, like, either the double passive or you right? get the double, you know. And I love that part. I was like, that's awesome. Well, it's genius is what it is. So genius. <laughs> I love that we have genius games in the chat. And six years. They've mentioned, yeah, six years of development. Wow. It only so. took me five years to get my two-year degree, so I don't know if I would <laughs> brag about six years. To ma Wait, is that? But they're very motivated to, like like she said, get the science right but still make it a right, good game. Right, if you take it home to your wife and it doesn't – and same thing right. with my mom. My mom yeah. is actually an anatomy teacher and everything, so she knows enough about this. And if I brought it over yeah. and it wasn't right, she would, like – She'd be looking at me like she's disappointed in me for buying yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got to be accurate. <laughs> Otherwise, like, I'm going to be like the bad son. She's be like, your brother never brought me home an unscientific game. I'm like, oh, sorry. All right. So the You're written out of the will. Yeah. <laughs> the collector's edition of this game and does have cosmetic reticulum. awesome upgrades to it. With a game like this, I feel like you would definitely need the little tiny upgrades. You have the little wooden round marker and plus metal coins. Like, it just comes with metal coins. You're, for that alone, yeah. the $10 in – was it $10 increase? Let me check. I can't remember. I don't think it was Let much. Yeah, so about the $10 increase, $10, $15 increase, metal coins alone, you're going to be spending 10 to $12 just on – metal coins usually yes. you know so i feel like that's a really great price point for that and then getting the other components that goes with the kickstarter exclusive upgrade i think the really the newest the newest trend that i've seen is the deluxe version of kickstarter which i really like because then people who miss the kickstarter don't feel like they like missed out on a whole bunch of stuff by not getting the Kickstarter version, right? Because they can still get it at retail. But it gives you like but that little you edge. can still get that, right. <laughs> so like when Greg came over to play War of the Worlds and I had like miniatures and he had cardboard stands, he was like, ugh, I want to go get the other version. But so they let me lord over him, but he still <laughs> was able to get a copy. I was able right? to get a copy. Yeah. He, I mean, he got a copy later, but I mean, I'm still able to like be snooty and be like, <laughs> snooty booty. And that's what but this is important about, right? That's what. That's Making why people people feel bad. That's right? why you decisions. play games. Right? That's right. That's right. So I can lord my intelligence over. To them. have this like class ask, warfare. Ask Alan how bad he felt <laughs> when I beat him in every game we play oh, when he came to visit. Oh, he traveled so across sad. the country just to lose a lot. <laughs> I didn't know that Alan had came to feel to town. bad. I'm bummed I missed that. He did. He you came were, to town just to lose out, games. Yeah. It was I felt bad for just him. Just to lose. Yeah. <laughs> so someone needs to stroke your ego. Comments Somebody wise, does, you're, you're not cocky enough. Comments wise, here we have. Let's see. Here. Eventually, I'll have enough metal coins to be Scrooge McDuck. You can never have too many metal <laughs> coins because hey, you never know. And Fallout bottle caps became the new currency, so <laughs> maybe it'll be these random metal coins from games will be the new currency when we go forward. <gasps> That's awesome. Can you Scrooge McDuck as a verb? Yes, absolutely. Oh, I've been Scrooge in my whole life. Absolutely, you can. <laughs> You're very, good, you're very well practiced at scrooging. Yeah. The Scrooge McDucking. <laughs> I think if you pulled all I the coins out of all your games, you'd have a pretty good oh. little pile to dive into. Oh, I Scrooge McDuck oh. the crap out of that pile of coins. <laughs> I that would be the best. You throw them all on the ground, you just lay in them. Is that the like new TikTok <laughs> sensation? <laughs> jumping into a pile of coins and being like, I had to go to the hospital. Guys. FYI, don't hurt yourself jumping into piles FYI, of fake don't coins. <laughs> yes, we FYI. are not responsible for any <laughs> coin jumping injuries. FYI, don't go on TikTok. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Period. So Battle Cry says, super deluxe come with genetic samples. Uh, probably uh, everything not. Everything comes with genetic samples because whoever packed <laughs> the game probably left some behind. <laughs> Just saying. Martha says, I was interested in this one but wanted to see My a game. playthrough. I think the price is good for the price. Did they not have a playthrough? I thought they did down here. Most game companies are putting in playthroughs. So oh, they got yeah. the Kickstarter confessionals. You'll want to yeah. probably hit up. Uh, Tantrum Ra House and the Man versus Meeple. Yeah, I was gonna say Ryan Sloan does good. that one, and he does a pretty much like a how to play. I think they did a pretty okay. good job with the campaign too. Like they have a lot of good pull quotes. They have a few different videos to show you kind of how it works. Oh, absolutely! So I think this was well. And put look at together. that cute couple yeah. doing their Kickstarter confession. Martha, they, are, they got some solid energy. Both Tantrum House, I like them. They yeah, do good they've stuff. got much better energy than you. I feel like just at a different level. Yeah, both of those. Welcome back. Groups Jeez, are seriously. excellent, Martha. Okay, so Greg, would you back this? Yeah, this is the one I'm into this, this week. This is the one you're into? Dr. Glorhog, would you back this? I'm assuming we're backing it, and I'm also assuming Deluxe, but I mean, you guys might want to talk it out so that we're not both dropping the money on I it. I emailed the link to my wife this morning, so we'll see how she responds. Okay, okay. But I'm going to cross my fingers on Stephanie, but I would back this. Like, yeah. totally this at the Deluxe version. Yeah. You're going to be able to teach your kids really cool stuff about genetics, and then... It's it's gonna be an excellent game, guys. Like yeah. I'm I'm 100 percent in on this game. Like I didn't really have anything bad to say about it. Anything else? Anything else? Anything mm. else? No. no. That's that's thanks. Thank you. Okay. Good, good, just good yeah. Good and thanks. Good company. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks it was for just kind of like a joining a us here. Yeah. Sure. We're gonna get that. All right. Move on. Next up. Let me get to my tab here. 
Oh, All right, this here, this, one. this mm -hmm. is going to be interesting. Have you have a lot to say? Oh, okay. So this one is Rune Lords, and this is by Jin Productions. This is for one to four players, and it's going to last about 45 to 180 minutes. If you guys don't know it's about Rune Lords, Rune Lords is a very large book series where people take endowments of other people in the game and therefore making themselves like almost these superhero-like powerful beings. Hey, this is in a... Uh, Got a froth giant? It's a skirmish style game with also you're like collecting cards for to make your equipment. Well, it's a two part and game. And a two part game. Yeah, because there's like the whole first part where you're kind of like drafting and kind of getting your right. army built, and yeah. then you go to the actual. You're building skirmish. your armies right. with what you're drafting and paying for from the board and everything, and then you're going into the skirmish you sort style of portion of the game. And yeah. Then go fight. Right, right. Now I know that this was on Game the Game with Becca Scott mm -hmm. and everything like that, and this is a newer. This is actually a video game production studio, guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, okay. like, they're coming from a video game production studio into board games, which I didn't think I saw any other board games that they've recently produced. And <coughs> they had, like, the setup win for this because it's a right. popular right. book series, okay? Yep. It's on Game the Game. They did ex excellent promotional stuff. Like, yep. this is very clear and easy to see and read and everything. Why aren't they funded more, guys? Yeah, I'm you've taken I mean, the words right out of my mouth, yeah. That's the big question. So doc I'm going to leave it to Dr. Gloryhog first because I know he's super excited to talk about this So and what's going on with to it. To kind of give you a background, I have read the first four Rune Lords books probably three times in my oh, life. Wow. And I'm currently, I think, on book eight on Audible. I'm on Chaos Bound, which is the first I've ever gotten in the series. Um, but I, I kept reading the first couple over and over again. Rune Lords is like... That like that special book series to me, it's like Lord of the Rings. Like if, if you didn't know really? about Lord of the Rings, I'd tell you, oh man, you gotta check out Lord of the Rings. It's got so much stuff going on in it. It's so cool. Rune Lords is amazing. The whole idea of Rune Lords is you've got blood metal that you can tra you can transfer you can transfer attributes from one person to another. It's got to be given willingly, but it's a big deal. So I, I take your sight. Now my sight's twice as good, right. but now you're blind. And you end up becoming more enfeebled, and you become a dedicate. And then part of my job as a rune lord is to protect you, to because the alive. easiest way to yeah. kill a rune lord is to go after his dedicates. But there's so many intricacies in that, because you could take metabolism, which speeds you up, so you're twice as fast as a human, but you'll die in like 50 years. If you take three things of metabolism, now you're dying by the age you're 30. When you're 30, you're going to look like you're 90-something. And you can do all kinds of crazy things. Like you can gain strength, which is great, right? You can get super strong so you can lift a horse over your head, but there's nothing they can do about your bones. So you lift a horse over you're your like head, it still <gasps> crushes your bones. And then you're like, oh, that was a bad idea. My back. Because <laughs> although you're strong, <laughs> <six laughs> <were made. laughs> which is probably actually what happened to me. So although you can have <laughs> super strength, they can't do anything about the limitations that's just built into the body, like dying sure. or stuff. But you can have a sword pass through your heart. It is an amazing it's story. It's a cool premise, for sure. So, so it's an amazing world that then has like another side story into it, which then goes into another side story. And it just keeps unfolding more and more, wor more and more of this world. And it's, it's probably one of my favorite book series. It's up there with Lord of the Rings and Wheel of Time. It's one of my favorite fantasy book series. So what's going on? So yeah. Why aren't your like cohorts, your fellow readers, backing right, this thing? Why aren't right. people flocking to this? I think. For me, the the one real big question I have, if Red Jin is still on, is, and they talked about this during Game the Game, they're using the generic characters that are in the world. You okay. know, so you're seeing stuff like, um, you're seeing Reavers, and I saw like a Froth Giant, and you can see some of these other things like the the Strangy Sots. I don't know if it gives enough lore for people who aren't in that world. Because, like, Strangy Sots are crazy. They can pull darkness around themselves. They lay eggs inside of living humans in order to, like, break out. Yeah. Like, it's just, they're, like, <laughs> evil incarnate, right? But I don't know if you are not familiar with the book series, if you're going to understand any of that, right? Like, I don't know if it how well it translates, because I think this could be an amazing either movie or, like, RPG. I but I don't know how you could translate, I could move three times as fast as everybody else, to an RPG and make it work well. Vampire the Masquerade does They do does a pretty it? good job, but it's, it's difficult. The, the big question, though, I had for Regin, and it was brought up on Game the Game, is Looks like they're, back they're the not way. using any of the main characters. So... If oh, okay, I'm going to okay. play a game that's based off The Simpsons, I want to have Bart and Lisa Simpson in there and Homer. <laughs> I don't want to play as like the treasury <laughs> characters that are off to the side, you yeah. know, like Abu's cousin. I don't <laughs> want to play as a character. And I don't know why. There's probably a reason. But you're not playing as the main characters. Like, I want to play as one of – I don't like. I want to play as one of the pyromancers. I want to play as some of the main characters in the storyline. I want to play as you know, just so many characters that are out there. I mean, I think, like I said, I think I'm eight books in. So there's eight yeah. books worth of characters, and they've gone through multiple generations. 
but they're using like generic people as like mm. your starting rude lord. And I don't choice. know who those are. I mean, there's like the warriors of Internook, which are like your Vikings. They wear pigskin armor. Like I want to be one of them. So I want to be a named one of them. Okay. Sounds like they do have so plans to expand it. Here it is. They did say that. Yeah. So yeah. David okay. Garland has worked with us to make an entry into the game system, then we will expand into the characters. I think that's really important for our viewers to know. And they said that on Game of the Game, but if you didn't watch like at least All halfway through that video, you wouldn't have seen that. And okay. And I, that was the first thing I questioned is, is why? And, and I get that not everyone's going to be a fan of the story and everything, but like for fans, they're going to want to play those characters now. You already sold Petter. He's like, and grabbed it with Audible. <laughs> so oh, Petter, it is. <laughs> yeah, sold him on the book. Not the yeah, game. <laughs> everybody's everybody's like, oh, we're gonna go read the those other books. thing. The other thing, and, and this is, I hope this is coming off as constructive as a fan, right? Usually, I'm a fan that's just like ec ecstatic if something I love gets brought into another form. Period. Yeah. Sure. With this one, it, it looked like the cards are super busy. There's so much going on with them. I can't look at it and go, "Oh, I know what this character's going to do," and I know what the characters do. Really? Like, okay. When you look at all that, yeah, there's there a, lot kind of a lot going on, on there, card, right? Yeah. So it's going to be really hard to convince somebody who's not heavily entrenched in the game to get into it. It'd be like me bringing out Twilight Imperium. So it's hard to get people into that if they're not willing to sit down and be like a part of something. Okay. So you're saying that possibly the people who are reading the books who would be originally interested in this game might right. look at the game and find it a little bit too busy and that maybe the lore involved in the game has not sold it to the other people, the hobby gamers. Right. Right. Okay. So because I really feel like they did so many like excellent things in this. Like yeah, it's a well the art Kickstarter. Looks, right. The art the looks fantastic. Great, yeah. They went to Game the Game, which they, is great. And they went to yeah. uh who else did they go to? Well there's they other people that they, they had went to. Mark Street from Dice Tower on right. Game the Game also. That's right. Yeah. So like all that was really good. That really piqued my interest. And as soon as I heard Rune Lords, I didn't see a lot of pre marketing. I, I only saw it because of um, Mark Street, I think, said something about it. And, okay. then I, and then it said Rune Lords. And so I was like, this can't be based off the book series because Rune Lords is used in other things. I'm like, this can't be based off the book. And then I saw, you know, based off the book series. And I was like, what? And I immediately watched it. And then when the Kickstarter went live, I was like, I got to check this thing out. And I went super in-depth in it. It feels like almost like um, a Song of Fire and Ice, right, with this big miniature type game. It's what's going to end up being. You're going to end up having, like, this miniature game where you're fighting right, and stuff. Right, right. But it's still like a, a title that's not quite nearly as popular to the masses because there's no video on this. Okay. So there's just not, not as many people read books, period. So you're just going to not, not get anymore, people. Not anymore, really. Especially. Like Lord of the Rings is popular because not only are there books, which I there's read the books when I was like in elementary. Books have been around for 100 years, yes. too. I, I read the books like when I was in like junior high or something. But then like I've shown my daughter the movies. Yeah. Right? Because she was younger. So and it's really hard. And there's been multiple video games and everything else based off of adaptations. This is the first adaptation I've ever heard of of Rune Lords. And I'm that's glad I thought they did an RPG. Didn't they do an RPG? I don't think did so. I, don't no. know. I keep saying how I want to make an RPG. Maybe it was somebody <laughs> was planning to, but they didn't. Because I thought I remember something about I'm that. I'm really glad you're such an avid reader of this series because this is what I wanted to hear and understand and it's like an amazing tap into. world. Yeah, yeah. So amazing. Because this was baffling to me, too, to see it so underperforming. When you've got a character who's got like like I don't know, like thirteen endowments of metabolism, and he's running yeah. like, and he's running like something like sixty, seventy miles an hour, and he has to worry that if he turns too fast, he'll break his ankle. Then he breaks his ankle, it's and it and immediately yeah. heals. It's a cool premise. Like 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 that, and so yeah. he's running on this broken ankle, but he's got all the stamina to kind of push through it. Like it is amazing. And then you've got the magic in the world too, because you've got people that are bound to the earth. They can use earth magic, but they're servants of the earth. And at any point in time, if they stop serving the earth, the earth can withdraw, and then they're just a a shell. So we have Heidi here and says 50 this is takes place 50 y years before okay. book 1 happens, oh. which is really interesting. That's good okay. to so know. So that's okay? why you don't have your big characters. Right, right. Th that makes sense. And Petter says that Dice Tower actually recently played this, which that'll be another video you guys should go and look at. You mentioned Mark Street, yeah. Yeah, and he's, yeah he's well Mark, well, Mark Street game, was game on Game the Game right. with yeah. Becca Scott. And then it seems like Sundry. Dice Tower yeah. also did something. Yeah. I, I see Meeple seen University. Meeple University did something with it. Yes. Uh, I did see Meeple University. Let's see here. <laughs> Vincent says, damn, why did I come back? <laughs> we'll sign up, I think. So Now, Heidi here, though, says, uh, the thought is that with most skirmish games, factions usually make you refer to other documentation for abilities and synergies. With this, you learn three abilities that are always within reach. And which that's on your card. That's okay. interesting because that plays almost like an X-Wing style game where you have your character card and then you know everything that you can do with right. Your, right. your plane or your miniature in this case. 
and you don't have to reference anything else in the game. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yes. It's all based off your cards. If you have a shield, you have a shield card that tells you what the shield does. I didn't even think of it like that, but that is actually really a genius way of doing that. You know? That's a g it's a good way to get people into the game faster. Well, it just makes it so you can start building these armies and stuff with everything, and like you can start taking different things from different places. And, well, it becomes a miniature game, is what it becomes. Well, this is a hundred percent like a, a, a skirmish style game, right? Yeah. Except with this phase. beginning portion of here where you're actually building things. Sort of so setting you're having it up, you're the having up. this yeah. board game portion of it in the beginning where you're setting up and building your army. In the game, That's instead of having it outside the game in a miniatures game where you, okay, you, you spend hours you outside right. the game and you do this. That's this has limitations, with this, which is kind of cool because <laughs> yeah. in miniature games, you can find people who over-maximize yeah. based on money. It's all self-contained here. Yes. It's kind of like when Dominion came oh out. Oh, my it's gosh. It's like a magic game, but it's all within the course of the game. This you know? just, right. like, blew my mind with the mechanics of this and how this all fits in together. This right, is amazing. That's why it works the way that it works. I love, like, absolutely love miniature games and to have that as not something that everybody builds ahead of time, but something that is built in person on the board as like this almost mini game ahead of time is amazing with that like that's fantastic it's a cool idea yeah i really like that idea why are you looking at me like that dr no, Lori I'm hogg just, just listen <laughs> i'm looking at you anything like it, i said it's hard because i am such a fan that like i kind of want to on instinct back it i don't know if part of the problem is is that it does it is coming from a, a newer to board game Right. Company, right? So there's not a lot of board game pedigree, and then the and the goal is a hundred thousand too. So this is such an interesting idea too. I think they're under two hundred backers so far, which yeah. is a little surprising. This is such an interesting idea too that I don't think the entirety of what is going on here like hit everybody. I know it didn't hit me until like just now going through it, and I appreciate you ho you showing right. up, Heidi, and explaining this oh, to yeah. us all and everything here because. We love the Rune Lord world, you know? So, let's see here. You need to know everything about them when you buy That's them as far as, the like, card. all of the things. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So because you're building your army is the first part of the game, and then war. This is something that fell flat for me. And, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Siri. <laughs> is that me? That was great. This was a game that fell flat for me, and all of a sudden, like, I am insanely inspired by the complexities of this game. Like, I'm super excited about this now, seeing it in this new light. Like, so excited. Mm. So, Greg, now from hearing <laughs> everything. <laughs> well, I still kind of want to hear more from him because, like, as the reader, like, okay. how excited are you? Because, like, to me, I have to admit, when you see a game that looks like it should grab a lot of attention and it's not, you're always, like, you're skittish about, like, plopping your money down because you're like, right. okay, if this is, uh, and I don't know how popular the book series is, but if this is as popular as it seems to be, and there's 190 something backers, you're like, something's not clicking for somebody and they know more about it than I do. And so I'm, I'm nervous about it. I do think the premise is cool. I think the idea of setting your, like the mechanic, the idea of the mechanics is cool, but I'm just nervous because of the sort of lack of interest, despite them doing sort of everything right. Here's the thing, though. I don't know if there was enough pre-marketing besides the game, the game and stuff. So like yeah. they obviously did that, but I don't remember. So I obviously, I'm mm. the one that usually typically finds the Kickstarters, right? And then she refines the list. I usually hear about stuff months ahead of time. You know, it's being posted about on Facebook over here, or I, yeah. I see a tweet, or I see a preview link to a Kickstarter from that. I didn't really see anything about this one. Like, especially it, it as a fan of the IP, me. you think you would be yeah, plugged right? in too. So like, yeah. I don't know why Audible didn't just be like, "Yo, bro, there's a board game there's coming game. out based off this book that you've got eight <laughs> copies of." People interested in this book might also like. Right. <laughs> After hearing everything, I like. I really want to play this game now because. I think out of the three of us here, I probably love playing miniature games the most. Yeah. Well, I would love to explain every single character to you every time you, like, <laughs> you touch anything and be like what that is and what's going on and everything else. It's going to make for a long play experience for the two yes, of you. Because you're going to be like, I'll take this card. And he'll be like, oh, well, that's interesting. There's a whole story about that card, actually. Yeah, In yeah. book three, it was revealed that and you're going to be this, like. This <laughs> is definitely one of those franchises that I can <laughs> tend to geek out on when you, when people sit there and they tell you like oh the backstory of Star Wars is Luke did this and you're like I don't really care I just yeah. watch the movies this is my nerdum right here like yeah. I love Rune Lord so much and I, I want to be clear 
I want this to succeed. I'm just telling you right, what I right. think is turning other people off. Right. Is that you don't have the playable characters that people know from the book series. So, like, yeah. that's not that's not bringing people that's in. That's coming, though. Right. But still, it's not here now. Right. So, I'm investing in something that I hope comes later that I have to then buy later. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there was enough pre-marketing because I didn't see it. And I'm, I follow Rune Lord stuff on Facebook. <laughs> and, um, and I think that the cards look a little busy. It doesn't mean that the information shouldn't be there. It just looks busy. Right. So without having a full rundown of how the game works, if I just look at the card, I have no idea what's going on. Over it's just so much information. Overall, hmm. I think that, first off, I want to back this game. And it's coming from a video game production company. So you know that even though this is a group that's new to the board game market, they're going to be able to produce this game. So right. nobody should worry about any of that stuff, even though it's oh, a yeah, new like it in the board game. It will get delivered. It will yeah, get yeah, delivered. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a video game company. Like Video game, game companies make so much more than board game companies. Yeah. After hearing everything that we went through here, like I yeah I'm sold I I would like to back wow. this game like what what is the price on this one fifty bucks fifty oh, bucks yeah, it's very for miniatures for what it is. And it does seem well a lot of it is standees and not cardboards. all of it is miniatures okay there are standees I think and the everything. miniatures are like for tracking stuff and then the standees you use maybe in combat but I could be wrong yeah see okay, no, okay. it's the other way around it's the other it's way around I think it's, yeah it's mostly yeah, but standees the and cards skirmish and portion you but have for 50 your bucks it's it's super cheap it's very inexpensive. When I'm coming up with all this and when I'm saying this, it's because I want it to relaunch and be super successful. Yeah. I, ju I just don't know if it's going to get made based off what's going on with the campaign. And it's right going to have now. a solo co solo slash cooperative play. Uh, that's, that's so of course. It's so easy to because fight you against could do evil forces. Campaign or scenarios forces. and stuff. Oh, yeah. my gosh, guys. Guys. There's multiple <laughs> books to pull lore from. Wow. <laughs> one of the big overall arcing things Turn about Rune Lords. Turn it a corner in real time. Well, one of the big overarching things about, about Rune Lords, too, is that there was one world, one perfect world, that got split into a whole bunch of shadow worlds. So, like, every world has a, an opportunity to be something different. Yeah. Like, there's this race that can kind of see into the future, but they're so hideous. They're always cloaked in shadows. They can't even look at their, uh, their own selves because it'll drive themselves mad. Yeah, I can Robert. Like, there's so much. There's so much lore out there. And then. Every little shadow world could have its own different thing going on. It's just there's so much lore. These are cool, this by the way. Forever. These little train mats and art's stuff. Art's fantastic yeah, on it. Yeah, these look cool. These look really cool. So going back to some of the comments here, Robert says $70 and $20 add-on for minis. Okay. So if you do want minis, it does cost a little bit more, but oh, I am okay. down with that. I like that was totally extra. down. It's actually better that they do have a standees option because not everybody wants minis anymore. Minis are burning some people out. I'm starting to get to the point where like minis just make me feel bad because I never paint them. And so yeah. then every time I pull them out, I'm like, this would be amazing if I painted it, but minis I don't overload. have four John, years to paint minis. John says, you have convinced me to back this. Thanks, guys. You're and welcome. rolls his eyes. eyes. Roll. <laughs> Daniel Zaya says, can we repeat everything said on the show? show? Absolutely. In about 30 minutes, you can come <laughs> back and we will repeat <laughs> everything we Battle said. Like, they should have sent a copy to you. Uh, yeah, I would have played it. We would have played the heck out of it. Yeah, this sounds amazing. Uh, it Like I said, I'm super happy, and thank you so much for the studio to actually come on and talk to us about this game because it really cleared some things up and some questions that we had and that you guys now benefited from because I went from being, like, okay with this game to insanely excited about this game. Like, I want to play it right now. So okay. I hope to see you guys at some board game conventions like Origins and Gen Con so we can actually have some hobby gamers check this out and everything. I'm, I'm super excited. I think this is going to be definitely something. Like, yeah, if I hear that they're at something that I'm going to be at, I'm going to go check this out. Oh, absolutely. And it sounds like David Farland is still inputting more into this, which is good as far as lore, which is amazing. And, oh, we drop Gabon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Gabon will be epic for sure. Um, a little <laughs> bit. Pretty, pretty, big, pretty big character. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I'm so excited. That's going to be awesome. I want to play Borenson so badly. Like, you don't even understand. He's like this Amazing warrior. I, yeah, I could go. I'll <laughs> tell you about it later. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. So Two hour uh, show today, guys. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I got to go get my MRI. The end, portion, the end portion of this was going to be crazy. We got to we gotta move on. Thank I'm, you so much. I am uh, Just so you know, I am in on backing this, and then if it ends up relaunching, I would back it again. For okay. Sure. So we are backing this. I have this. no hate. I just have some questions as a super fan. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg, would you back that? I'm going to pass on that one. Leave us in the comments, guys, if you guys are going to be backing that one. I know some of you, we changed your minds during the stream. Let us know. This last one here, this is this is the one, guys, for me. <laughs> I'm just letting you know ahead of time. There's too many ones I geeked out over this 
this time around. So we have Vampire the Masquerade by Flyos Games. This is for one to four players. It's going to last about 30 to 60 minutes. This is a storytelling style game based in the Vampire the Masquerade universe in Montreal after Sabat I believe the decimated. Sabbat yeah, have just been decimated. There's if you don't know don't anything really know about why. that, it's vampires, classy vampires versus ru versus rugged vampires and the classy vampires well, it's tribal out. vampires, <laughs> right? Because every group <laughs> has like their own kind of powers and thing and way of approaching things. Right. And this game, you have a scenario-based system with a choose-your-own-style adventure to these cards because this is not like a book you have to flip through. This is like decks of cards, which I think is really cool, that you start drawing from, and then you read the cards, you make decisions, and you can make decisions based on your traits. Guys, obviously <laughs> the people who made this are into Vampire the Masquerade because this is the most Vampire the Masquerade board game I have ever seen yeah they have tattoos oh i yeah. oh no absolutely they if you watch the whole the video you can tell they're like super they're passion project for this yeah, i'm super not gonna lie passion project yeah. for me this is my D, &D right like right. I s we spent probably two to three years when i first got out of the military playing vampire the masquerade like in two or three different campaigns every week like we were playing multiple campaigns at once yeah for me vampire the masquerade has the fighting stuff still, of course, that you have like in D&D, but it has so much more intrigue and political things and yeah. the things that you can do. It just makes it so much more immersive. The world's really you're not just out. You're not just a vampire who's like, oh, I'm going to eat somebody. There's just so much into it. Having that hunger and the beast within being produced in this board game where like you can do things, but like as the beast starts creeping in, other things are going to happen. That's such a huge mad. part of the game that Frenzy, gets left baby. out. That Frenzy. gets left out of games all the time. And Kabuki's Kid says, Hunters the Hunted. Yeah. Like, that would be an awesome expansion we for this Hunters game. Too. So exciting. <laughs> so, the cool thing about Vampire the Masquerade, besides it's had multiple editions, right? I think it's right. on its fifth edition or something now, or maybe more. Um, it's also sponsored for, like, you can just play as a hunter in that world, or you can play as just as a fairy in that world. And it's its own separate thing. You can play as a werewolf in medieval times. Like, there's so much. There's, like, Old West vampires. There's wow. so many different source books that takes you all over the place. And, yeah, it's amazing. And I played a Bruja that beat up a werewolf. So just remember <laughs> that. I knew you guys were really so into this IP, so yeah. I was excited to hear oh your my gosh. take on this. Yeah. Vampire the Masquerade is probably one of my favorite RPGs because of the political aspects. It yeah, really is. It's, it's my favorite. So <laughs> Daniel says, I feel this week has provided a, pr a plethora of burrito decisions. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> we are not going to be eating for the next four months. Yeah. No burritos for four months. <laughs> this, is your order, this is your weight loss plan. Yeah, in order to spend the money needed for all of these games this week. That is for real, <laughs> Daniel. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. So, Greg, since you are not super <laughs> yeah, invested in the IP. Yeah, yeah. How does this game it present to you? It sounds awesome. And I really like the the story cards where it's like you can go down different paths and decide how to talk to the different characters. Yeah, you can just talk your way through scenarios. Yeah, it's it it feels like I mean it, it's it's obviously a passion project. It feels like they've put a lot into this. It feels not only like exciting and cool looking, but like very smart as well underneath it. So it sounds good, but it's just not an IP I'm familiar with. So that hundred plus price tag obviously which is scares a, you off which is a st you have sticker shock anyways with games like that because you have such a large well and there's so many of these games we talk about these kinds of games that right. come out that are very big and campaign and immersive you know every week and so for you guys this is like oh this is they finally did this for me it's another one of like a series of, of these style of games so i'm you know i'm i'm less excited obviously than you guys but i'm very excited that you guys are going to pick it up and excited to join you guys. Well, <laughs> the, the thing that so one of the reasons why we stopped playing RPGs as much is because as you know our daughter was yeah. born, it was much harder to be out at two a.m. at night yeah. playing these games at some you know coffee shop or whatever. Adulting makes RPGs hard. It does. <laughs> well, th the nice thing about this is it's like the RPGs in the box itself, right. and it's going to be something like a Seventh Continent or something where you're playing and getting that story that yeah. you like through the cards and decisions you're making, and you can make this this really epic story. I'm I'm excited about it because it does have like a continuing story, so it has like that legacy type of effect where you feel like yeah. you're doing things. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if there was a button here, I would slam it already. I'm in. Like, 
I'm yeah, I'm good. This You're is good? and, and this back. Uh, you mentioned Seventh Continent. Like this theming uh, for someone who doesn't know it hasn't played it is way more interesting than something like Seventh Continent for me. Like right, I like that it's dark. Theme. I like that it's mature. I like that it has that potential. And it seems like it will be well written because there are, like you said, More multiple books. editions. Oh. You know, they flesh this world out so much that you assume the writing will be good as well. So it's definitely exciting and intriguing, but it's not something that I'm like definitely going to back because I can understand that of, Here's of that price point. But and yeah. this is missed on on you, Greg, because yeah. you didn't you you aren't invested in the IP. Yeah. The detail that they've put into this, guys. So. They used to have these really awesome vampire, the masquerade dice that had the little onks on them and stuff like that, where you would roll. Yeah, exactly. They're they're old dice. They even like went down to the detail of making the dice look like the older style vampire, the masquerade dice in the game. The player boards look like character sheets as you're going along. They reference the same sort of things, and then you have this board game uh combat system on here where you have cards in your hand and then you're going to be able to play those cards in order to simplify the mechanics of combat in the game mm -hmm. and like i love the fact that fly the people at flyos games were so invested into this ip and their love for the game really showed through in this like i this is the game i'm most excited for guys <laughs> like it's one of those ones where you see the other Vampire and the Masquerade games that have come out, and I'm like, oh, this is good. Oh, that's a good rendition. But this one is, like, a perfect rendition of, like, just they took the two games and squished them together, board game, Vampire the Mas Masquerade, boom. We have story, a story-driven campaign with all these awesome aspects of the RPG that are built into it, and then you're going to be able to play it in 30 to 60 minutes and not have to spend four hours at a table for the next eight months playing well, a game. <laughs> more, more so than that, it like, be dependent on somebody else showing up. They even said that in the video. That like, always, it's so hard to get everyone together. Well, that was always the problem. Like, yeah, If the storyteller yeah. couldn't show up or if like somebody else that you were planning on doing something with didn't right. show up, it really changed what you could do that night. And this, just, yeah, it looks amazing. Plus, yeah. you know, there's something to be said about kind of having a story that you get to kind of discover and go through. I really enjoy that. And Vampire the Masquerade is an amazing storytelling game where I've never, we, we spent a six hour session playing the game where we never rolled dice. But we did wow. so many things. I threw a car at somebody. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> stuff happened. It was like, things definitely happened. At one point in time, I recruited, like, the A-team. I Googled them, so they were, like, my followers. <laughs> and I could just call them up, and they'd ride up in the van. Dun, 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 so dun, dun. here's the other thing, guys. If you guys are, are interested in this game, I believe that it, it may be up on, like, Tabletopia. And Flyos, let me know if that's available for everybody to kind of test out the first phase of that game and if i i don't remember if it was on the website or not but they do have it on tabletopia that's okay alan the vampires don't have to be a hit for you because you're a <laughs> hit to them oh <laughs> so fangy they did everything right with this game i'm so excited like well, i'm gonna go back to some of the comments here let's see here there's so many comments but so many story driven games i want to be in but i need to get through the backlog first says no. petter don't give up petter you can get one more just one more. Here's the thing, too. This <laughs> Until reminds next week, me and then one of more. <laughs> this. Well, this kind of reminds me of like the Castle Ravenloft games, where like you can play the Castle Ravenloft game to kind of learn how to play Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like, there's kind of like that crossover there. I feel like this would do the same thing for people. That by the time you're done playing this, or you've played a couple rounds, yeah. you could probably just bust out into your own story with these characters if you wanted right. to. It and it'll introduce you to the yeah. world well. It gives it's a good mesh of between board game and yeah. RPG. Yeah. Uh, Kabuki Kid says Bonacore used to LARP vampire. I That's believe awesome. It. Oh, Pixar didn't happen. <laughs> We, uh, <laughs> we LARPed it like for like two nights and tried it. My little brother like almost broke his ankle. Martin says, I do miss the World of Darkness nights. It is fantastic. Absolutely. Let's see here. There's another comment up here that I was looking at. Adulthood equals choose RPG or board games. Rarely time for both. Yeah. Totally agree. Now, this is licensed Feel you, fully Martin. through White Wolf. White Wolf slash Paradox Interactive and everything, so you guys don't have to worry about that, which bite is fantastic. Buy. <laughs> nice, nice bite before you buy. That's Greg's motto. No, I, we're gonna I buy. Get a taste. This, is, this is not a problem. This is one that if we even if we didn't have the show and we just saw it like in a store, we would buy it. Oh I, yeah. I knew you guys were in. Oh obviously, yeah. On this one. Absolutely. All right. So. Thank you guys for our thoughts on I'll this. I'll play your copy. You'll play our <laughs> copy. If you'll invite me. Well. 
We don't invite just anybody in. Uh -oh. I mean, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. he's sizing me up. He's like, you got to be chosen to be a vampire. I don't know. You can't just we don't want some caitiff running around all weak blood. Yeah, you don't want weak blood in your <laughs> campaign, man. <laughs> Doctor Glory Hog, would you back this game? Yes, of course. Our listeners out there, are you guys going to back this game? Like, you guys already know I'm insanely over the moon. This game was my number one pick, guys. Like, that was that was it for me. I mean, and there were so many good games this week. There, there was a lot. That's why we did five. A lot of great games. So many. I'm, like, good games out. I think out, you like kind of <sighs> want all of these. I don't yeah. think you were, I like, do. a definitive I kind of no do. on any well, of them. Well, here's the no. problem. So, like, when I'm, when I'm yeah. going through and I'm selecting <laughs> the different game stuff, right, and I give her, like, the big list, I'm like, here's ones that I like, here's ones that she likes, and then she kind of refines from there. But no matter what, by the time she refines them, they're all games she's at least somewhat interested sure, in. Sure, sure. So she's always wanting to get all of them. I am 100% in on Vampires is my number one, and then I would not be upset if we did Rune Lords. I don't know if it's going to fund – but I'm whenever it's ready to fund or it gets close, I'm there for sure. Yeah, and I think that's a good thing to notate, Dr. Laurie Hogg, is the fact that since I am the one that refines the list, this does favor towards me just a tiny bit. Like does. these are usually the ones I'm most excited <laughs> about Sriracha talking about. Blood, okay? That's amazing. <laughs> I wish I had Sriracha flavor blood. Now, thank that's you. That's like the ultimate hipster level to have Sriracha flavor blood. Aww. And I smell like hipster avocado toast. Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of our publishers showing up today, too, guys. You guys yes. answered so many of our questions, and we really, really appreciate you guys showing up to the show and talking to the people in chat and stuff what with us. Get like where are you going to get your Flos Games like tattoo on your arm? With, with the Ankh and stuff like that, yeah. the Vampire the Masquerade Ankh and then yeah. the Flyos Games thing here. Don't be surprised Maybe later. next week. Maybe later. Fresh ink <laughs> over here. <laughs> So let's see here. I Over the a, moon. I can get a Rune Lord branded on my arm. That's something a werewolf would, stay, <laughs> would say. <laughs> That's true. Daniel says he's a spicy boy. Oh, oh my. <laughs> there, was, there was Sriracha jokes earlier, but yes, he is a spicy boy. You're the spicy boy. And I want to know, guys, for you guys, what was your favorite pick? Yeah, like what are you guys backing? Because apparently we're two, three hundred dollars in on this bad boy. Easily. This was a big week. And the weeks are not going to slow down from here, guys. No. This Origins is the prime. and Gen Con are going to start coming up and is just going to get worse. So We're getting prime time. Start making some extra money, extra jobs, guys. Extra jobs, side extra hustle. money. Hashtag side hustle. <laughs> Hashtag side hustle. <laughs> All right. Well, Greg, are you going to be back on our show like next week? That's the, well, probably. Sorry. I might have That's not good. <laughs> I plan Do you to be hate back. Us? I no, no. Do I plan to be us? back every week, but I think I have to go visit family next weekend. So okay. I might miss Friday. Okay. All right. But we where, won't can, miss you. where can we end up finding you at? Yeah. Where if, can if we people find are missing you? you it's yes, like they're crushing you. on you and they want to <laughs> see you again. <laughs> We've done Geek, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. New episode every other Monday I've as well. On. Audio podcast. Oh. I listen to Secret Cabal now. I was gone too long. <laughs> I'm changing podcast. Our last episode was almost Switched Secret Cabal. Secret Cabal. Cabal. We went long last week, but <laughs> it was, it was, it was fun. a long episode. <laughs> and thank you for everybody showing up in chat. So, Dr. Glory Hall, where can we check you out at? Uh, I'm going to get an MRI in like a half hour. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> we need so to run, uh, guys. So, you can find <laughs> us on, you can find me on glorywhound.com with her, of course. You can message us both there or on anything that says Dr. Glory Hog. I'm the only doctor. At Dr. Glory Hog. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Twitter, on Twitter, Instagram, Instagram all over you the place. You mostly probably find me and on Glory Hound, if you are interfacing with Glory Hound on Facebook, you're actually probably interfacing with Dr. Glory Hogg, guys. Well, secrets. <laughs> secrets. <laughs> Dr. Glory I'm Hogg a flirty boy on there. <laughs> helps me a lot on Facebook, okay? A spicy flirty boy. <laughs> I'm a spicy a boy. A spicy boy. <laughs> so spicy. And as far as burritos for the week, I mean... I'm going to have to hustle some burritos someplace else because, like, I don't know. I, maybe Taco Bell $1 burritos or something. Maybe we're we can get have Vampire to the Masquerade to, like, sponsor us We're going to have to go down. Get, yeah, get Flyos Games out here <laughs> and be like, please, Flyos, <laughs> hook us up. I will tattoo my face. <laughs> we're literally starving to death. <laughs> because it was a rough week for Kickstarters. It's, it's Everything like it looks It feels fantastic. bad wallet-wise, but then when they all roll in, it feels really good. <laughs> like, yeah. All right, guys. We will see you guys next week. And, oh, what games are we playing this weekend? We are playing Isle of Cats. <laughs> <laughs> Isle of Cats on Tuesday. And we are playing Kodama 3D by Daryl Andrews. I Yay. like the dramatic pause. Yay. That's I had good. to think because I was scheduling like a whole month out. <laughs> we have a very special gift for you guys oh, near Valentine's Day. We're going to be playing Cinder. 
which is oh. the dragon dating game, Ellen which is going to be Cinder. so much fun. Because if you come visit us, you can play prototypes. We are going to have a legit dragon playing Cinder. So wow. just, you know, that. All right. So it's we'll see you guys crazy. all later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>